Today's talk is going to be about a word that probably a lot of you heard about, but maybe you didn't quite exactly know what it is, and that's Arduino. So this talk is dedicated to Arduino and specifically for Arduino for engineers. So let me just introduce myself. Hi, I'm Daphna, Daphna Mordechai. Uh, I learned computer science in the Hebrew University and graduated in 2008. Uh, ever since, I've been working in the industry as a real-time embedder software engineer. <clears throat> I love technology and I love sharing it with others. And today I would like to share my passion at Arduino with you. This talk begins with a sad story, actually. Um, a few years ago, I wanted to get to know what Arduino is and to start learning about it. So I signed up so, to a makerspace around the, the place I was living in, and I went to a beginner's workshop. I already had a background of a few years as a real-time -time embedder software engineer and a team leader. Um, so I thought it's going to be fun. I found myself with uh, a lot of young kids going through um, some very basic knowledge about Arduino that I actually don't even remember what was what, what it was. Uh, at, and about two hours later, uh, we actually got to see the hardware. Uh, and what we tried to do is to connect it to the computer and to blink a LED. Some of us could do it. Some of us, after even these two hours, couldn't do it. But after we could do that, I don't know if you know, blinking a LED is like the hello world of the embedded uh, uh, programming embedded systems. Um, so after that, I asked the instructor, I asked him, OK, so what we just did here is we used the GPIO in order to blink a LED. And he looked at me, and he didn't really know what a GPIO is. And this is one thing that you will come to know that is very powerful about Arduino. Um, so some of the language that we use as engineers not necessarily, um, you, you won't necessarily find them among people that use Arduino. And they still can do awesome and powerful things with it. Uh, back then, when I was, was asking him that, after three hours of, of not doing much, um, I was kind of disappointed that I didn't know, that he didn't know to answer. And I actually didn't got a good answer about what were we actually trying to do. Um, so I assumed that maybe Arduino is not interesting. And I only got back to that way later. Um, but what I want to do for you today in this talk is in a very short time um, give you a lot of information about Arduino, but not in the regular way that you used to teach kids Arduino, but in the way that engineers, hardware engineers, software engineers, people with some background can learn a lot of things pretty quickly. So in order for you not to, bo to be sad, but to be a happy robot, uh, I hope you can uh, find the answers in this talk. I do assume some background. I do assume that you know a bit about how computer, computers and how they work, and this knowledge will give you the opportunity to learn things quickly. And I do assume that you know the code in C and C++. We're not going to do live coding today, but in order to know Arduino quickly, you do need that. Uh, it is true that today you can also program for microcontrollers like with Python, with MicroPython. But for this talk, we're going to assume that uh, we have some background in C and C++. So what is the agenda for us today? So today, we're going to talk about what is Arduino. And you see that when people say Arduino, they sometimes mean a few different things. I hope that I can convince you why you want to use Arduino and that, that you do have a lot of good reasons for that. And then we'll go through the details. What is the actual hardware that we're using when we're using Arduino and the software? And also, I hope we can get to see a few examples uh, for real life projects that are done with this platform. So why Arduino? In order to know that, we need to take a step back and to say a few words about this world of embedded systems. Embedded systems are basically each and every system that has some microcontroller or some you know, processor embedded in it. Uh, it is literally everywhere around us. It can be our washing machine, our coffee machine. It could be the, uh, the media devices that we use, transportation means that we use every day, medical devices. It's literally everywhere. And there are programmers, embedded programmers, that their job is to make these systems work. Um, so, Arduino gives you the opportunity to create such systems. 
Lately, one of the buzzwords that a lot of people, uh, maybe you, you probably heard, is the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is to take this world of embedded systems and to take it to another step, to connect um, all this machinery and to, to connect all these machines and physical objects and devices to the Internet. When people say the Internet of Things, they usually, they sometimes also mean a literal Internet of Things that will be deployed uh, with dedicated uh, um, communication protocols um, for all of these devices to upstream the, their data to the cloud. And it's something that we're gonna see growing more and more. Um, uh, this lecture again is about Arduino. It's not about IoT, but I do wanna give you a taste of how these things work. So if you saw before that we have all these devices that didn't have any connection to the internet or didn't have any um, their own communication uh, means, um, they have sensors, they have actuators, they can sense their environment, they can maybe operate on the environment, um, some of them can, some of them cannot. In the world of the Internet of Things, they now also have some form of wireless communication. It can be uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE, uh, Wi-Fi, um, and one of the options is that they will speak, they will uh, communicate with some gateway, and the gateway can be a router at their house, it can be your mobile phone, um, some uh, middle hardware that will transform, uh, will transfer the information uh, to the cloud. When you have all this information in the cloud, you can now do some monitoring, analytics, or to control the devices. A second option is that the devices themselves will be able to communicate with the cloud. Um, again, there are dedicated protocols for that, uh, it's different type of uh, communication modules that the devices will need. But as we can see now, the devices themselves will be able to upload their data to the cloud. And you can design different type of types of systems like that. It can be something with uh, simple. It can have cheap sensors. Uh, uh, it can have one or more. Uh, it can have a uh, small amount of sensors or a lot of them. It really depends. There's so many things you can do depending on what system you designed and what resources you gave to this, uh, uh, to this system. And, and obviously different things have different needs. If you want to do something small, you just want to monitor a plant at your house, that's something small. But if you want to do, uh, uh, if you want to design a system uh, for like, industrial use or something that needs uh, real-time capabilities, it will be a different system. But overall, uh, there are a few um, attributes or prototypes that are common for all these embedded systems. We can see it all around us. I'll just give you one or two examples for uh, devices. Let's say if you have a, a sport watch that can uh, send all of your uh, uh, training data up to the, to the cloud and give you um, the ability to monitor your training. Uh, that's a really fun thing that I found online. Uh, they took a yoga mat and they actually put sensor inside it. So you can imagine when you have this smart mat, what you can do with it, maybe it can give you um, real-time feedback when you're training and you can also upload things to the cloud and monitor it. Um, I think it's a fun example to see that a lot of things that used to be um, not smart devices can now be smart devices and Arduino can allow you to do that. This is a bit more complex uh, example, but you can also use it for agriculture. Uh, you can ever hear, you can see in the picture, it's like a station of sensors with a lot of information that you can use it and um, not just for fun, not just for hobbies, but actually uh, in real world cases. So I hope I convinced you a bit that we have a lot of applications and uh, for embedded systems that we can think about. Um, they can be small and fun devices and they can be something, uh, some product that is in an uh, industrial use. Um, and now when we have a bit, and we have some notion of what are the things that we might be able to do, um, let's see how we can really get it done. So the first thing we need to do is to define the terms because when people say Arduino, they sometimes mean different things. So first of all, Arduino is a company 
actually there's Arduino and Genuino. You can look it up in Wikipedia, um, but it's a trademark. Uh, it's a company that has products that you can buy. Arduino is also a single board microcontroller, and we will go back to that term. Uh, you will understand it well by the end of this talk. So when people say Arduino, they sometimes mean the actual hardware, the piece of hardware that we use. Arduino is also an IDE, uh, Integrated Development Environment, uh, for coding code for Arduino, the CNC++ uh, software that we develop. So when people say Arduino, sometimes they just mean the software that we write code with. And when people say Arduino or Arduino projects, they also mean the community, community of learners, community of, of developers, people that make fun things and share it online. So Arduino in different phrases will mean different things, but this is what Arduino is. So the first thing we want to go over is the actual hardware. Arduino is a single board microcontroller. <coughs> and it's an easy to use one. It was designed uh, for quick usage and to be able to use it without a lot of background. Um, and it is for everyone who wants to do fun and um, interactive projects. So basically Arduino will sense its environment, uh, will collect some data from its sensors. Uh, and according to, to that, it can decide to control something, maybe uh, LEDs or lights or motors or any other thing that it has uh, ability to control. But we wouldn't want to uh, confuse this term the Arduino, a single board microcontroller with some other terms that maybe you also heard about. Maybe you heard about the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a single board computer. Uh, that's not exactly the same thing. Again, you can look it up in Wikipedia. Um, that's actually a, a, a computer uh, on one PCB. Um, it usually has, like, it needs to have an MMU which maps uh, physical addresses to virtual addresses that the operating system needs. And also it has some other peripherals according to what Raspberry Pi put on it. So sometimes people mix between these two. You can do great and awesome projects with both of them. Today, we're gonna to talk more about Arduino, which is a single board uh, microcontroller and not a single board computer. But don't get confused. Just lately, recently in January, Raspberry Pi announced that they're gonna start manufacturing uh, single board microcontrollers as well. Uh, so they have their own chip that's really like so very new. <laughs> uh, so maybe now when you hear about Raspberry Pi, uh, we'll hear about both of them. But I hope the distinction uh, was very clear. So, well, we'll not get too deep into this slide. I just wanted to show you the levels uh, of uh, uh, and the amount of software stack that we have between the bare metals and actually the environment where the programmer uh, is coding. Because when we look at Arduino, um, there's probably your code and some libraries that you got with Arduino, but this is basically it. And a lot of embedded systems are like that. When, when we look about the Raspberry Pi, we now have also an operating system, let's say Linux um, or maybe uh, different uh, computers that are in the same style as the Raspberry Pi. But you see here that there's a, a bit more software. It's not exactly just you and, and, the, and the hardware. And when you go to the other end of like typical servers, let's say that you're a uh, web developer and you use all these frameworks for web development and you have so many different layers between you and the actual physical hardware. So I think um, this slide gives you a bit of a sense of to what are we coding when we code to Arduino? What type of system is it? And uh, I think it's just a nice thing to put in to see the scope of it. One cool thing about Arduino is that it's open source. It's open source, the software is open source, but also the hardware is open source. So you can prototype things with Arduino and also then go back uh, to the diagrams and actually go and um, manufacture your own PCB based on that. And it makes it much, much easier than other platforms that are not open source hardware. So really that makes Arduino so powerful and we'll see later on how. Okay, so now when we got the basic idea about why Arduino, 
what is the actual hardware when people say i have an arduino at home what do they mean so this is arduino uno i think it's like the most known uh, arduino board but it's not the only one and sometimes people think that that's the only arduino we'll see th that it's not but what exactly do we do we see what do we have on board so the most important thing here is that we have the microcontroller the mcu and then we have around it all different things that we need in order to work with it uh, and to utilize it to its fullest. So one of the things that we see here is that it has all its GPIOs. Uh, this is the breakout for it. And you can see they're also marked about with their types. You can also see that in the specification for the Arduino Uno. You can see here that you have digital pins and some of the pins are PWM and we will talk about it later on. Uh, you see them marked here with a tilde and you have uh, analog pins you have the analog reference you have like the ground pins uh, um, the uh, power supply you have a power led indicator just so to just so you can know if the arduino is on and off and sometimes when you code with physical hardware you need to know <laughs> if if the if the board is okay you have some other uh, receive transmit leds just for a good indication you have a reset button uh, this is how you plug in with USB uh, the, the Arduino to your uh, computer. Uh, you have a voltage regulator. So you can see that you have all these things that really makes you, um, uh, can help you to work with this MCU at best. You can say in a way that that's an evaluation board. Like, I don't know if you know the term uh, for different chips. It's like an evaluation board for this specific uh, MCU. So this is how Arduino Uno looks like. But there are many other Arduinos, and sometimes people doesn't know that. You can go into the Arduino website or to Wikipedia, and you can see what are the official Arduino boards that you can buy. Some of them were designed to be smaller, maybe to be as part of like uh, wearable devices, um, and each and every one of them have different uh, uh, attributes and capabilities. Um, so, okay, maybe our go-to will be um, uh, to start with Arduino Uno, but I think just the fact that there are more options and that you can choose one uh, that, that meets your need is uh, a good thing to know. So I want to say a few words about microcontrollers versus microprocessors because I think not all uh, engineers knows about it and also maybe someone who's not an engineer but is very enthusiastic about Arduino will see this, uh, uh, this talk. So basically, a microcontroller is a system on chip, an entire system uh, that the manufacturer chose uh, to assemble on one silicon chip. So when you choose a microcontroller, you already have a few um, things that have been set up for you, and you can open the specification, the spec for it, and see. So you have some CPU and memory and clocks and uh, some peripherals, maybe uh, hardware UART, all these type of things that you didn't chose for yourself. These are part of the uh, what the microcontroller has on its silicon. It's it's not it, it's a bit like the 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 company chose for you things and 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 already have it in one piece. So it's not like when you assemble a computer and you can choose this and that. You you just need to know what is the specification of this uh, microcontroller. So on the Arduino official official uh, website, you can see a comparison uh, table that you can compare all the official Arduino boards and you can compare their specifications, the specs. Um, so um, this is just a print screen that I did for you, but there are many others of them. Uh, I just chose a few that seems interesting to me. But um, I hope that by the end of this talk, you can uh, feel comfortable to understand exactly each and every row here and to know what you need for your own project. So you have here the name of the board, let's say uh, um, the, uh, the Mega, Arduino Mega, and you can see what processor it has on it. A lot of the Arduinos are based on AVR uh, microcontrollers, but as you can see, not just. Um, and you can go to see the spec exactly, and you can see that some boards have 8-bit uh, microcontrollers and some have 32-bit microcontrollers. And 
there, there is a range and you can decide exactly what is the, the main processor that you want to use. Other information that you see here is also relevant for your project that later on when we'll see how we are designing one and um, you need to take into consideration. So you have things like, you know, basic things about it is like, what is the CPU speed uh, or the uh, input voltage that also is relevant when you choose sensors because you need to see that they match. Um, and you also have all the GPIOs here and the different types of them and how many of, of each type you have. For example, you see here the analog pins uh, and you see that there, there are big differences between different boards. And also some of them have analog output, but some don't. So it really depends what you want to do uh, in your project. Um, and you need to see that the board uh, fits for you. And also you can see different amounts of uh, uh, GPIOs, some of them PWM. Uh, you can see that the mega has a lot of it. Uh, that's one of the, the, the reasons it has its name. Um, and also like different attributes like the flash memory, the SRAM, and uh, it can be relevant when you want to try to run algorithms on it. You need to know what resources you have, both to know uh, what software you can fit in it and also how many things you can hold in memory when you're computing things. And also you have things like what is the, um, what type of USB is connected to the board and um, you are like physically work. And we'll talk about UART uh, later on, but just you can see here that some, when you have a hardware UART, uh, it can save some time for you, um, time for the CPU, um, um, not to do a software UART over GPIs. Um, and also some of the boards have uh, EPROM, that's a erasable programmable read-only memory that you can store maybe configurations on it or maybe information that you want to store. So there are a lot of characteristics here that each and every board has that later on when you will decide uh, to prototype something specific and you have these requirements that you need to meet, you will know how to uh, choose the right Arduino for your project. So let's say a few more words about GPIOs and what we do with them because I think it can help us to understand how the Arduino board is gonna work with other modules and other sensors, okay? So we have these general purpose inputs and outputs. There are uh, like digital control lines that the microcontroller can use uh, for different purposes, for communication with other modules or um, sensing, sensing uh, uh, something from the environment or to use for as an actuators. Um, some of the pins are like digital, but some of them are analog and they can measure the actual voltage uh, on the pin, and then they use ADC. ADC is analog to digital converter, and they can give you the range uh, to understand what you just sensed on this pin. And something in between that is the PWM, which is a pulse width modulation. Uh, you can look it online. There are great YouTube videos about explaining how it works. Uh, it usually, it usually what it does, it, uh, it uses time um, to simulate analog uh, um, results with a digital GPIO. And um, so these are the resources that you have on the system that you can afterwards um, connect to other models and your microcontroller can communicate with and utilize. And um, what you see here is a small table uh, about communication protocols that uses these GPIOs in order to communicate between two models. Um, we're not going to go into the spec of these things, but uh, you can find it online. Um, it's a communication protocol, not like uh, Wi-Fi that has a specification and certification and all that. It's, it's a simple one, but as long as both sides can know to work exactly with this specification, you can transform uh, a lot of information between the two units. And I think it's even if you're not an uh, embedded programmer and you're just playing with Arduino, I think it's something really powerful and also interesting to see how you can take these GPIOs and try to and build upon that uh, to do some really fun things and um, uh, to use for communications. So some of them have like the SPI has a model that it has a master and it can communicate with a few different slaves and others are one-to-one. -one. Um, again, you can look into it in order to uh, start programming for uh, Arduino, 
you don't need to know the specification you don't need to know how to debug that because usually do have uh, libraries for all of these things. I just think that it's interesting to know how things work behind the scenes. And that's really behind the scenes. This is an SPI example when you measure it with a scope and, and can actually see uh, how the lines are uh, changing uh, over time in order to uh, communicate between two models. Okay, so if you're gonna remember just one thing from this entire talk is this. Arduino is, a, uh, is the board that we just talked about and uh, it gives us the ability to use a microcontroller and has inputs, outputs, and it could be it also has some communication means. So the inputs can be um, sensors, they can be buttons, they can be um, anything that can give information to the device. And the output could be, again, anything that you can connect to it so in order for the device to do something in the world. It could be LEDs, it could be motors, it could be uh, LCD screens. And then you also have uh, communication models that you are able to connect to your Arduino. Again, it can be uh, like uh, short range communication protocols like uh, Bluetooth or like Wi-Fi. Uh, the ESP8266 is, is one of the breeding common use for Arduino. And it can be cellular and, and after you know that these are your building blocks, you can start being creative about all the things that you can build with it. So in this talk, we will not be able to go over the actual sensors and show you exactly how to use them. But I do think that it's a good thing just to go over a few of them and to give you the links that you can do it on your own. Because I feel that that's exactly the things you need. It's like to give you all the crayons and then you can paint whatever you want. Um, so just to get a feeling of, uh, of what it is that you can connect to the Arduino, literally almost like everything you can sense digitally, you can connect to Arduino. And these are some of the most popular uh, Arduino sensors. I um, I just looked it up online and I found this really nice tutorial that also have code uh, that you can go over and, uh, and look. There's this uh, ultrasonic sensor that you will see in a lot of projects that uh, sense distances and give you information about it. You can have things like light sensors uh, to see how much light you have in the environment, uh, infrared sensors, you have um, touch sensors, you have sensors like uh, to see if there's smoke around or flames around or to see what the temperature is or what is the humidity um, or things like uh, your heartbeat uh, uh, sensor to, me to measure heartbeat. So there's so many different options uh, that you can see or to detect sound or to, to detect colors. So many things you can do. And when you know that this is your building blocks you can do, you can get creative with it. So I definitely encourage you to go online and just to see how these things are. There's a lot of uh, YouTube videos showing specifically each and every sensor, how we use them, how they detect what they give you. Um, and there's also a link for you here. So another thing that I wanted to put in this talk is uh, the notion of the sensors kit that, the, that you can find online, because there's so many of them. And you can just buy one kit and, and then start working with it and start playing with it. You can see that here they even have uh, like this plug and play connectors that it would be easier for you uh, to use with your Arduino. And basically what you need to do is you need to go over a few different kits and to see what sensors they offer you. And usually they come with code already or with online support and, and just go ahead and take a look. What are you interested in? Um, maybe when you start uh, to go over the different options you have, you, you have good ideas about what you can do with it. Again, it's good to have some uh, knowledge about uh, electronics. A lot of things you can uh, learn online. Uh, I don't have any background in electronics. I took computer science and what I learned, I learned from um, literally YouTube. So it is easy to learn and to get the basics. Um, and you see that these kits, have a lot of things like uh, a breadboard, so it'd be easier uh, to connect devices and jumper wires and all the sensors we talked about. So there are a lot of good kits out there. I, I just uh, snapshot two of them for you, but um, go ahead and search for, for what interests you. 
And there's another type of kit that, again, you can buy now and start playing with is kits that are robotic kits. That means that someone already created uh, a project for you or decided what uh, what robot you can uh, assemble and, uh, and and start playing with. And I think it also could be a really good idea. You see here the motion sensors that we saw before uh, and already comes with like the motors and the wheels and uh, like everything is cut neatly and nice and you can uh, play with it like Lego. So I think it could be a really good uh, idea if you'd like to play with this type of stuff to have a first um, robot building uh, um, uh, to buy a kit like that and to build the first one and someone else designed for you. And when you learn that and with the uh, knowledge you gain with it from that, you can start uh, the next project you can uh, design uh, from scratch. So one more term that is related to hardware that I want you to know is the Arduino Shield. Arduino Shield is basically a PCB that is designed to be uh, in the same uh, in shape of your Arduino board. Uh, Arduino Shield is matched to a specific board. It's not something generic. It, it, it has the same sizes of your board. And since uh, we know the breakout of, the, of all the different pins for each and every Arduino, someone can design a board to put a module on it. It can be communication module like Wi-Fi or cellular or Ethernet or whatever. Um, and they know the breakout. And you can just plug and play it one on top of the other. And it will be easier for that uh, to use it. You don't even need to play with the jumper wires and the cables. And um, let's say this module uses a few, uh, a few GPIOs, a few pins that you need. The others are now available for you to keep on playing with. And to, to connect them to some other things. It's like an extension for your hardware uh, and an easy to use plug and play extension. And as you saw before, you can stack them one on top of the other if it makes sense. Okay, you need to see what the exactly pins they're using and everything. And also, uh, when I search for that, some of them are really fun, like, you know, LCD is always fun and LEDs are fun. But I also saw that some people uh, create Arduino shields uh, for learning. Uh, and for uh, uh, for learning uh, in different sensors and uh, different things you can do with Arduino. Because you, you see here the motion sensor and there's a photoresistor here and a few LEDs and buttons and the buzzer and an LCD screen. So someone already designed what you can do. Uh, this one looks like an Arduino Uno, but I'm, I can't see exactly, so I'm not sure. So someone already thought about it and created a shield for that. And now you can uh, just try to, to program to each and every one of these pieces and, and learn from that. So Arduino Shield is also something that uh, it's a word that people know uh, when they start working with Arduino. And one more thing that I didn't try for myself, but I thought was so very cool that I really wanted to share with you is that uh, Adafruit has a cloud service for IoT makers. What does it mean? So we talked about communication uh, models that you can work with Arduino, and sometimes they're a bit, a, a bit harder to to start working with because you do need to do the other side too. Like you need to program uh, maybe the mobile side or the the server side, like uh, the the web part of it, and not just the embedded uh, system. So um, what Adafruit did, uh, they have like a cloud service for IoT. So if you want to do some project of your own and you want to upload your information and to use their cloud, um, they have some program. This is like from, uh, I found it a few years ago. You need to check these type of uh, solutions. But I just think it's really cool that you can have something like ready-made that I guess is fairly cheap or that for the first few pieces maybe is even free and just to use the infrastructure to test your ideas. Um, so I just came across this one. Maybe there are also other ones, but like this, this community is, is open and there's so many creative ideas and so many things you can probably find if you can just search it online. Okay. So now when we did the hardware part, okay. and now when we went over the hardware part, we actually want to code for Arduino. So let's see how it is done. 
So this is the basic working process for Arduino. And um, we'll, we'll go through it one by one, and it's fairly simple. The first, the first thing you do, you're going to program with the Arduino ID, and we'll talk about it in a bit. Um, in the embedded system world, there's a term named cross compilation. Cross compilation means that you're compiling a software on one machine, but you're going to use it on a different machine. So in this case, it could be that I'm uh, compiling the Arduino program on my laptop, which has a, it's like an Intel Core i7 machine. And but but the device that we're gonna the end device. The machine that it's going to run on is the Arduino, let's say some AVR microcontroller. So this is cross computation. We're going to program using the Arduino ID. And behind the scenes, what's going to happen is that the ID is going to compile it and create a hex file. And um, again, this is something that you don't really need to know in order to code for Arduino. I just really like to know things in depth. So I think it's fun to know how things are working. So the the hex file has the information about your uh, software, about the program you want to burn to the device. But it also have information about the device itself and its memory and how uh, your program is going to be loaded to the device. That's exactly the, the information is, you have in the hex file. And after you created that, uh, you just press this button that will burn the program or like upload the program to your machine, to the Arduino machine, to the microcontroller that is on the board. And then you have it on the machine and you can start running it and debugging it and working with it. So this is the basic flow, the, the programming flow uh, to work with Arduino. The Arduino ID looks like this. When you're going to install it on your uh, laptop, um, you'll see this uh, software. And there are two technical parts that I decided to uh, to include also, even though they are less theoretical and, and more uh, practical. One of them is that you need to tell the IDE what board you're using. Uh, I assume that the default is probably the Arduino Uno, but we already know by now that there are so many different boards, and the IDE needs to know to what machine am I going to compile this code. So you can compile the same code to different machines just by um, choosing uh, a different board to compile it into. And another technical thing you need to do is you're physically going to connect your Arduino to your computer, and you need to tell it to what COM port, to what communication port uh, do I want to connect my device to. And usually, the Arduino ID will also know to recognize the device and will tell you you have here this type of Arduino. Okay, so this is the Arduino ID, and also another term that is in, from the world of Arduino is Sketch. Sketch is actually the program that you're gonna uh, uh, right. This is a uh, the sketch is your program, and when you will open a, a a new sketch, you will have this setup and loop functions that you're gonna need to implement, and we'll just talk about it now. So again, as we've said, you're gonna open your device, and you have the setup and loop um, functions. The setup is just as it says; it's gonna set up all the things you need. So here you're going to put all the initializations that you need according to the modules that you're going to use and you're going to code. It could be setting up G GPIOs, or if you use a third-party uh, library, maybe it has some initialization uh, function that you need to call to. When the, uh, when the Arduino is going to be turned on and start running, um, it's going to run the setup function. And then it will run in a loop the loop function. You don't actually see the loop, but it will run in a loop. Okay? You don't see, you don't have your uh, for this and that, uh, no, while true, go over this loop, but it will happen behind the scene. And another thing that maybe is, again, technical, but is worth mentioning is that the, um, the sketch that we talked about is a file um, with the extension INO, like Arduino, Genuino, the INO file. And it is located inside a folder with the exact same name. And this is how the ID knows to uh, recognize it, and it knows that in this specific uh, file, you're going to see the setup and loop functions. You can have a lot of more code, and just like any other C and C++ uh, program, uh, with regular includes, and you can just add files, all will work fine. You just need to make sure that this is 
uh, the basic thing you're going to have. You're going to have a sketch, an INO file with the setup and loop implemented in it. So just so you know that you can download uh, Arduino for your uh, PC or for your laptop, but you can also work online and you can also work on your uh, tablet or your mobile phone because there's an IDE for that as well. I didn't try it, but I saw that online and I don't know who can uh, code without keyboard, but if it works for you, that's great. Um, so I also wanted just to show a really quick example for uh, some code. Uh, because uh, I really feel that it can be helpful for someone who's interested in Arduino but never saw any code at all. So, for example, if we just talked about the setup and loop um, uh, functions, then uh, you can see here that what we're going to do now, we just want to print things uh, to, to the serial monitor that we'll see in a bit. In order to print for that, uh, Arduino already provides us an object named serial uh, that you can write things into. But you do need to set it up. And, and I can tell you now because you already know some of the terminology uh, uh, behind it is that this is a C object that's going to wrap uh, a UART. Uh, and you know what UART is? It's a communication protocol. It's going to uh, write things from Arduino to your PC. And then you can see like logs and things you want to print. So the first thing you need to do is you need to set it up. And to set up uh, a UART, you need to give it a baud rate. Uh, so this is what we did here in the setup, and it's going to run once. And then in the loop, it's going to run again and again. I have some um, global index here that is initialized to zero, and I'm going to print a low baot. Baot is an organization that I volunteer in uh, for women in tech. It prints hello baot. Uh, it has a serial print line, again, with the index that I'm currently at. It's going to do some delay uh, for 3, 000, the 3,000 here is in milliseconds, which means it's going to delay for three seconds. And then it's going to increment this um, uh, this index, and we'll do it again and again and again, and we'll print out every three uh, seconds. So uh, this is just the, the serial uh, the object, but you can do so many other things according to your project. This is the basic. Uh, idea about how the code is going to look like. Okay, so how do we code for Arduino? Um, sometimes you will hear online the Arduino programming language. As if the Arduino programming language is a unique language that is just for Arduino. And it is true and not so true. It is true because you do have all these words that uh, maybe you know, all these libraries that uh, if you ask like a 10 year old that uh, that is working with Arduino, he wouldn't know to tell you necessarily that that's C and C++. And that's okay because if someone is just getting into Arduino or maybe he's not an engineer, he's one of your friends and you want to do a project together and you don't need to teach him C and C++ and start working with pointers and, and all that. It's not necessary. You just need to understand the basic of programming uh, and also to understand what are the utilities that Arduino already gives you. Um, so there are some libraries that are already in the environment of the Arduino and some of them are like uh, uh, regarding uh, the GPIOs that we talked about before that we use all the time, some of them related to time, um, reading pins or writing to pins, uh, setting them up, all things we need in order to work with Arduino. So there's no real Arduino programming language, it's just C and C++. Um, and and you, you have some defines that are saved. And basically, if you go over it, you see that you know it. And if you're not knowing, if you're not familiar with it, you can assume that it's just a library or an infrastructure that Arduino wrote for you. And it really makes it easy for uh, someone without the engineering background to start working with it. And also, this is one, one of the reasons it is so powerful. Uh, people can tell you that they code for Arduino, or they don't really know it's in C++. And it's great because they're making things work and they can build some awesome things. But since we know it, we can also know how things work behind the scenes. 
So let's recap the basics of Arduino for the software, as we talked about. So we talked about the sketch, the I know file that has its own folder with the same name, the setup and loop uh, functions that you have to implement. You can have third party libraries. Um, you know that behind the scenes, it works with an hex file. And you can, can go online and see what the format is and how exactly it is implemented. And also we know that in order to work with it, we need to install the ID or to use it on the web. And sometimes we need to uh, install additional boards or additional libraries. So this is something that uh, I'll get to in a bit. And you can also see the link here. I have an article about it uh, on my website uh, that you can see uh, and get some more details. So as you said before, behind the scene of Arduino, it's just the C++ code, C and C++ code that sits, uh, is located on your machine. Uh, I just print screen for you where exactly it sits on my machine. But if you saw before that we use this uh, tone function, uh, let's say when you use it to play something with a buzzer, um, you can go and search it on your PC. And if you want to change something, you can change the code and uh, then compile it. And so behind the scenes, it's just C and C++ and, you know, a compiler and a linker and things just work. Uh, you don't have to code with the Arduino ID. Uh, you can go, for example, to use uh, Atmos Studio. Um, I don't see a good uh, reason to do so because it, it really is a great environment and it is, it is simple, but it is powerful. So I don't see a good reason to do that. But if you want to, to choose your own tool chain in order to program for Arduino, you could do that as well. Uh, but just so you know, uh, all things you need, all the the things that are compiling behind the scenes and that the Arduino ID hides for you, hides for you to make it simpler for you, you can find them if you want to, and then you can change whatever you want to change. Okay, so um, just to be even a bit more technical about things that maybe if it's the first time for you with Arduino, you have the serial monitor uh, that you can open. Again, you remember that we defined on one side uh, when we set up our Arduino, uh, the baud rate, you just need to see that the baud rate on the side of your IDE is the same, so they can communicate uh, the serial monitor on your IDE and uh, the Arduino device that you just code to. But then you can see things that you choose to print uh, from the function. And that's a really nice way uh, to debug and to know what's going on uh, and also get some information about the things that Arduino is sensing. Uh, so for debug purpose, it's it's great. Uh, you also can see here that when you're compiling things, you'll get all the compilation errors or the information about uh, uploading things to the device, if it was successful or not, you'll see it here in the console. And as I said before, um, maybe you would like to install different uh, Arduino boards and to work with your IDE with them. What does it mean? Okay, so there's a, another term named Arduino compatible boards, which means that not necessarily Arduino, the company manufactured, but maybe someone else did. And if you remember, we said before that it's really powerful that the hardware is open source. So if you want to design a PCB of your own, you can do that. And then you can um, just either you can, if you're not doing any changes, uh, you can work as is as if it was an Arduino board, that's it. It, it, as if it was an Arduino one. But if you do make some changes or changes to the pinout or I don't know, some other things you wanna do in your own PCB and you wanna uh, have different infrastructure, you can uh, uh, you can do that and you can like extend what the Arduino ID can do with your own package, with your own package that uh, wraps the board that you designed. And also what you can see is that uh, some companies, let's say Adafruit is, is the example we have here. They're creating some great Arduino boards that are Arduino compatible that you can work with the Arduino ID. But what you need to do, you need to go to the ID, to go to the board manager and to search for this specific board to find it and to install it on your machine. And as you saw before, what does it mean to install it on your machine? It's going to download everything it needs uh, in order to compile it like all the files it needs, all the infra, um, if it's a different board and not something default, maybe you need a specific compiler for that. All things you need, you can do uh, using this uh, board manager. 
So you can find online a lot of boards that you can buy that maybe are appealing to you. Like, for example, in one of the projects that I did, I wanted a device that also have a Bluetooth low energy chip on it. And uh, Adafruit had one of these. Uh, so I installed the uh, appropriate board and then I could work with it with Arduino. So it really, it really is powerful because it gives uh, uh, the ability to extend this platform for so many different boards and so many different hardware. Okay, so I, as we said before, Arduino is simple, but it's very powerful. And uh, lately they added uh, Arduino ID debugger and a command line, everything you need in order to work conveniently and develop really, really good uh, projects on it. So I just want to give a few pointers and also to say that um, if you know C and C++, it doesn't mean that you know embedded programming. Uh, just like if I know uh, a bit HTML and CSS, doesn't mean that I'm a good uh, web developer. So if you're doing fun projects, uh, that's cool. Maybe you don't need to do a lot more of that. But if you want to use this platform to prototype, Maybe you should learn a bit in depth, uh, learn some electronics, learn some uh, uh, about embedded systems and about embedded programming, and maybe even get some equipment to do things on your own. Um, and if you go ahead and search, let's say you want a sensor in your system. So maybe there are different types of sensors. Some of them are more sensitive and some of them less, some of them more expensive, some of them less, some of them, uh, I don't know, maybe can work outside in different temperatures. So it really depends on what is your need and what is your end product that you want to develop. So after you have all the basics and you feel comfortable with it, you can go on, read the data sets, the data sheets and, and, and decide, uh, choose wisely which one uh, it is that you want. So again, you can do so many things with Arduino. It really depends on your need and uh, uh, what is the project that you're going to create. Okay, so the rest of the time that we have now, um, I want to use to show you some really, really cool Arduino projects and to talk a bit about it. Um, I just feel that to know all these things, it's not like to Google uh, Arduino projects and find some really fun things. And Arduino can be really fun and playful and you can get so creative with it. Um, this is an example, if you wanna see something that I created from my website, uh, that's the board that I talked about before uh, from Adafruit. Uh, and actually, uh, it was a project I created in order to teach uh, Arduino to engineers. So I have some examples here of like, uh, this is a photoresistor to sense the light outside and then the outputs can be buzzers and uh, a buzzer and a few different LEDs, uh, LEDs. Um, and uh, you can do, and also there is a big part of there uh, about Bluetooth low energy that is not the scope of this talk, but I, I find it also interesting. So. Um, you can take it as a simple example about how you can design something with different uh, inputs and outputs and also a communication module. Um, and I also have step-by-step -step, uh, um, tutorials uh, that also explains a bit about uh, um, the electronics behind it and how things work. So uh, if you want, you are very welcome to check it out. Usually for doing a project, you will see all these uh, diagrams um, and also a really cool thing that I just found lately is a, a simulator for Arduino. It doesn't use like S, uh, SPI or I squared C, so maybe you could only do uh, some ba basic things with it. Uh, it's the ThinkCard uh, simulator and um, I just signed in with like two clicks and it took me maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes to uh, create this project that I'm already familiar with and to take my code from GitHub, paste it and things just work. So it was it was really fun. And I, you can literally go right after this talk to the website and see some examples for that and start playing with Arduino, even if you don't currently have the hardware. Okay, so um, we have a few more minutes and I wanted to show you uh, some fun uh, project I think you can see how playful Arduino can be. Um, and let's see. Uh, this is like uh, playing a uh, happy birthday 
It's like a, a really fun birthday card. And with three different buzzers. Uh, I really like this project. Like anything on the web, there are cats everywhere. <laughs> so this is like a food dispenser for cats. And literally, you can, the cat can maybe press here and can get some food. And you can, there are a few versions of this project online. Uh, you can see people creating this with Pringles. That's, that's like uh, a really fun project. You can only also play some sound. Um, that's, that's something that everyone with a cat can do at home. It's just really fun. And that's also an awesome project that uses a color detector in order to uh, sort M&Ms according to their colors. So you can see how playful it is and how you can do complex things without doing one really uh, play with it. There's also uh, a lot of projects with these LED cubes. I found them absolutely amazing. I don't know how much time it's going to take to create one of these. Maybe, I don't know when I'll retire, but it's just so much fun. Uh, and there are so many different type of uh, these cubes. Uh, go search things online. And what I also recommend is this is a logo of a makerspace uh, around where I live, but find a makerspace near you or do something with friends. It's, I think the best a way to learn and to do something fun is uh, to do it with friends that are also uh, eager to learn and also enthusiastic about the things you are enthusiastic about. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show uh, is examples for Simon Says Game. I don't know if you know the game, uh, I think it's like from the 80s. It, it shows you uh, a pattern of light and usually there's like sound with it and then it waits and it waits for you to do the same pattern. So let's say you did like um, red, green, red, and it waits and you need to do red, green, red, okay? So you can do the same thing with Arduino. How can you do that? You basically need the buttons, you need the colors, like the LEDs with different colors, you need the buzzer, and then you need to write the software behind it that can display different uh, patterns. These patterns go uh, and get longer and longer when you get better. And then it needs to detect what the user had pressed here and to see if he did it correctly and if he did it well and to give him some indication about it or with the lights or with the buzzer or both. And then if he did well, he can uh, give it the next pattern or the harder one, or if it did bad, it will start all over again. But that's a really fun game that you, you if you'll search for it online, you'll see a lot of projects. Um, and also the, the way to go from these drawings and to prototype it and work with Arduino uh, and from there on to go and design a PCB of your own and actually create one of these. I think it's it's a great project to start with and it's, it's just amazing how you can create a product on your own with these tools at home. Okay, so uh, we're basically done. I just really wanted to give you some more additional resources for that. Uh, first of all, how do you find some really great projects? So you can uh, follow Arduino uh, Project Hub and you can follow them on Twitter. They have some really cool projects all the time. Uh, you have uh, some different websites that uh, feature really good projects and they cover them. And you also have the like SparkFun and other fruits websites. They have a lot of projects and tutorials and there are so many places you can learn. You can also go and learn about embedded programming and about embedded systems. And, Literally, there's so many different places you can do that. And so I recommend some of these um, in order to get started and uh, you can find amazing things online. I also have a blog post that is that covers a lot of the things we talked about here today. If you want to find it uh, online, uh, it's on Medium. And you also have my website, so you can go and read a bit more. And a lot of the things that I talked about they are there and also some things about uh, Bluetooth Low Energy and about IoT and you can check it out as well. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, I really hope that uh, I spared you a lot of beginners tutorials and beginners workshops and that you can now use the knowledge you have as engineer and uh, not just to start 
very quickly with Arduino, but also to do creative stuff and maybe uh, to do things that other people didn't do before you and share it online and share your YouTube uh, project, uh, share your project on YouTube, uh, or maybe write code and uh, contribute uh, to open source. And uh, I hope you find it as interesting as I did. Thank you.